we had a case of uh, poliomyelitis query muscular dystrophy which came to our opd for abdominal hysterectomy for dysfunctional uterine bleeding uh, actually this patient is a 34 year female patient who was diagnosed at the age of 3 years as polio as per her relatives and it started in the lower limbs first and within one year it progressed to both the upper limbs as well as back and neck and within one year she became bedridden uh, she did not have any breathing difficulty her bowel bladder control was also normal and she was mentally uh, normal i mean no mental abnormality was there a uh, surgical history she was taken outside in periphery center for abdominal hysterectomy with very basic investigations and uh, general anesthesia was planned for her so at that time they induced her with propofol and gave scolin and after giving scolin they tried for uh, laryngoscopy and uh, even the epiglottis was not visible and the case was postponed they somehow made her awake and uh, the case was postponed in view of difficult intubation as they could not intubate the patient and they shifted this patient to our hospital her vaccination history was not available uh, as the surgical history there was no event of tachycardia or trismus or muscle spasm or hypotension at that time at the periphery when they gave scolin general examination her core body was moderately built all four limbs have atrophy uh, distal limbs are more atrophied than the proximal the limbs are semi flexed at the elbow and knee joints but no sensory deficit was present patient was comfortable in supine position she was unable to sit or even become lateral she just moves like side to side she just slides her height could not be assessed unable to extend the extremities and weight was approximately 38 kg it was also not assessed as we did not have any other uh, uh, machine to assess her weight her vitals were absolutely normal room air saturation was also normal uh, she had a difficult iv access only one vein was available on the left uh, hand which was uh, the extremities were flexed so it was difficult which was very positional airway examination mouth opening restricted uh it was rather less than two fingers her neck extension was also restricted and i al already had an history of difficult intubation so she was definitely a difficulty routine investigations including ecg chest x ray were done we did a echo to rule out any cardiomyopathy our physician advised for abg though her room air saturation was normal he wanted to see the baseline pco2 and the abg was absolutely normal bedside pft was done and it was also normal patient relatives were not affording and rather not willing for any diagnostic test for myopathies which would now anyway not change her outcome so we decided to go ahead with this we took a high risk consent for her and we planned the anesthesia for her uh, we planned the awake fiber optic intubation as she was a difficult iv access so we also planned right igv cannulation for her she very well tolerated the awake fiber optic intubation in this we just gave anti cialog or glyco and uh, anti emetic and 0.5 mg of midas after induction we gave, uh, when the tube was secured we gave her iv propofol and long acting muscle relaxant was given on uh, 50 microgram of fentanyl was given as sedation and uh, she meant, she was maintained on inhalational anesthesia as i already had an history that she tolerated the scolin well outside so i gave her inhalational anesthesia and the case was done uneventful in that uh, the only thing was that she required very less sedation and intraoperative also very less requirement of inhalational anesthetic Uh, actually, patients with polio myelitis they demonstrate altered respiratory function, cold intolerance, and risk of expiration. They also experienced chronic pain in muscle and joints. Though she was not complaining any of them, the important point was that they are increased sensitivity to some anesthetic agents, long-acting narcotics, and inhaled anesthesia, anesthetic gases. 
along with this there is a increased risk of fatigue weakness and somnolence after anesthesia so extubation uh, we have to be very careful during the extubation anesthesia must center on the preservation of muscle function post operatively we should consider short acting anesthetic agents uh, analgesic requirements and use of warming devices prolonged post operative care and hospital admission are possible in these cases uh we extubated the patient on ventilating bougie after she became fully awake and after adequate generation of the tidal volume as muscle power we could not assess so after uh, uh removing the tube we check for uh, her breathing on the ventilating bougie it was normal and she well tolerated the procedure and she, then she was extubated on table thank you